In January of 2021, uh, I began investing into the stock market, my wife and I. And since January of last year, between crypto retirement and, and taxable brokerage accounts, as well as our, our child's uh, custodial account, we have put in somewhere north of $120,000. And in this process, in this year and a, and a quarter, uh, there has been a multitude of videos and things and strategies that I have learned. And so what I wanted to do is put together the four reasons why we invest in ETFs. And so I want to welcome you to the channel. If this is your first time coming to the channel, uh, this channel is about our journey to financial freedom. And each week I do a topic on either our custodial account for our children, um, crypto, retirement, and then this week is going to be our brokerage account. And at the end of the month, I summarize kind of what has happened in the month, give you an overview of all of our accounts, and then prepare ourselves for the following month. So if any of that is of interest to you, please uh, hit that bell notification and, and take a look out for the future videos that are here to come. So today we're going to be talking about the four reasons why I choose to invest in ETFs and, and hopefully give you some ideas and some things to think about when you discuss, or excuse me, when you decide or in choosing how you want to invest for your future. The next and at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a, a portfolio review of our taxable brokerage account and how it has done in this particular month. And so the first question that I have for you and what I would like you to actually answer in the comments down below is what kind of investor would you like to be? Because this is going to determine the route and how you want to invest into the stock market. Some individuals might be interested in being a little bit more active, whereas some would like to be a little bit more uh, passive, uh, as well as. I don't think you have to be one for the whole period of time, depending on where you are in your journey, in your financial freedom journey and your journey of building wealth. Uh, at times, it might make more sense to be active and then at times it might be more make more sense to be passive. And so with that being said, give me an idea. Leave a comment in the comments below as to what kind of investor you think you are or would want to be. And so the first thing that I want to bring to your attention as to why we invest into uh, ETFs is because it allows us to focus on our main source of income. At this particular stage in, in our wealth building journey, we don't have enough dollars invested to make it worthwhile to put more time into uh, uh, investing. And what I mean by that is, is, is I own a landscaping company. My, my, my wife has a tax business as well as she has a corporate job. And right now it makes a lot more sense for us, for me to, go sell an additional project, go do a couple more hours at work, and be able to bring in an extra thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month in order to take those funds and invest it into the stock market. However, I fast forward, and this is where I was saying it depends on the, the, the season that you are in your life, is that once our portfolio gets north of, you know, five hundred thousand dollars, seven hundred thousand dollars, ten percent of that is fifty, seventy thousand dollars. A hundred thousand, ten percent of a hundred thousand is ten thousand dollars. And now it starts to make a little bit more sense to put more energy and time into becoming maybe more of an active investor because those returns are a lot larger. But when you're at the beginning building your, your, your wealth, I believe it makes more sense to work a couple more extra hours in your job, sell, in a, sell some additional products in order to make that additional commission than it is to be trying to make 10% off of a $1,000 investment, 10% off of a $10,000 investment. Your portfolio just isn't as of size yet, and I understand you're working, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let's continue working and, and pushing towards uh, really figuring out what is going to be the most uh, reward for the energy that we put in, what is going to have the biggest return for the amount of energy that we put out. And so then the second reason or the second uh, uh, decision that we have made as to why we like ETFs is because it is industry specific. And what I mean by that is, is you will have the ability to be able to invest in industries that you see either have a long runway and or that you know have a bright future. And a, a good example of that in one of our ETFs that we use is LIT, L-I-T. And what this particular ETF really focuses on is lithium ion batteries and all of the different uh, portions or categories that go along with producing, mining, and then making batteries for EV vehicles as well as solar panels and things of that nature. And in our eyes, we see that being a very bright future in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And so this allows us to be in an ETF that we know that we have a long runway with and see some possible upside in the future. 
Another type of kind of staple ETF is maybe a consumer discretionary or even a consumer staples. Uh, IYC, which I have here, is a consumer discretionary ETF, and that has businesses such as Amazon, Nike, uh, Chipotle, Netflix, Disney, companies that you invest or not, not invest, but companies where you spend dollars on on a monthly basis, where, where, where it might be Disney Plus, where it might be Amazon purchasing a numerous amount of uh, materials and items from there, going to eat at Chipotle on a, on a, on a weekly, monthly basis, your targets, your cost goals. Uh, your Walmart, wherever you kind of spend that discretionary income, all of those type of companies are within IYC. And the great thing about this uh, or investing in IYC and, and ETFs in general, in, in, in our opinion, is that it allows you to never have to figure out which companies are on the trajectory up and which companies are on the trajectory down. ETFs do all of that for you. You see, I don't have to figure out where I am in the market cycle for Sears or a company like Sears. Is Sears growing? Is Sears stabilized? Or is Sears declining? The ETF is going to be able to switch companies in and out for me once they see that those particular companies are changing focus or and or the, the, the dynamics of that company are changing. Whereas I never have to sell that particular ETF because I can stay in that for the long term and allow that ETF to switch companies in and out. The third reason that I believe uh, ETFs are good for us and why we choose ETFs it's kind of going to that, 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 that latter portion of, of statement number two, and that's going to be the tax advantages. You see, when you have uh, uh, investments that are, are held, assets that are held for over a year, you get to pay long-term capital gains when you do sell those particular assets. And depending on what your income is for that particular taxable year, it can be long-term capital gains is anywhere from zero to 20% as of right now. Whereas if you have short-term capital gains, switching in and out of companies, buying, running up, selling, uh, and taking a profit on that, you're going to be taxed at your uh, ordinary income rate. And so depending on where that is, that could possibly be higher, be the same, or, or lower uh, in some instances. But your ordinary tax rate is typically a lot higher than the long-term capital gains rate. And so I say back to that, that example of being able to hold an ETF for a long period of time and never having to sell it, that, along, uh, that allows you to get into that long-term capital gains rate and then sell your investment when, it, when you're ready to sell. Instead of being forced to sell because you see Sears is declining, uh, I don't really have another example, and I don't mean to keep beating up on Sears, but the trajectory of Sears is changing, or maybe a Peloton um, in, in recent times where, where, where they're going through some internal things and, and having to change course in their companies. Maybe you weren't ready to sell at that time, or and or maybe uh, you had already done some larger taxable events and you didn't want to add to that. Where, well, when you have an ETF, you can sell when it makes sense for you because you have an understanding that that particular ETF is always going to be switching companies in and out so that that, 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 that asset, that ETF, can continue growing over the long-term basis. I'm not talking on a, on a monthly, weekly basis, and not even, honestly, a quarterly basis, but on a yearly, uh, five-year trajectory, that ETF wants to continue moving up in, uh, up, up in the chart. So... That is why uh, the third reason why we like to be invested in ETS because we can decide when we want to sell, when it makes most sense uh, for us. And then the final reason as to why we like ETS is because it gives us a basket of companies and not ever, every, uh, every particular company pays a dividend. But eight times, nine times out of ten, your particular ETF is going to pay some type of uh, a dividend, whether it be on a quarterly a uh, biannual or a one-time uh, event typically at the end of the year, they're going to pay some type of dividend. But I wanted to give you a chart here to just show you what happens when you reinvest those dividends over a long period of time. As you can see here, that gold kind of shaded area is what you would have seen, the appreciation, the asset appreciation you would have seen over this time frame. This time frame is the S&P 500 from 2000 to 2020. So this is right at the uh, right at the, uh, why am I going here? The, the COVID breakdown, if you can see, you can kind of right here, this is where that COVID breakdown really starts to happen. So this doesn't even account for any of that upside that we saw after that. But if you just notice here that that gold region gives you somewhere, you know, around the high 300s to 400% return over that 20% uh, or over that 20 year period. However, if you were to reinvest your dividends 
you will see somewhere around this 700 to 650 percent uh, return. An additional 200, 300 percent return. Uh, excuse me, if, if you're going for it, the 300, 300 percent return uh, just by reinvesting your dividends. And as you see here, it does take a while to build up. So back in 2000, uh, the, they were a lot closer with each other, and then over time, that separation really starts to occur. And so, depending on where you are in your wealth building journey, if you're in your you know, mid-20s to, to, to mid-30s, uh, early 40s, you're going to be able to be invested for 20, 30, 40 years and really get to see this, this appreciation difference happen between just normal asset appreciation and then reinvesting those dividends with and that asset appreciation. So I just wanted to show you that there is power in reinvesting your dividends over the long term, and this is just really going to allow an aid in the upside that you are hopefully going to be seeing with your investment strategy. And so now I just want to kind of go over our portfolio uh, and where we were or where we are uh, as of this point this month uh, from last month. And so our account value as of Friday is, is $94,000. We were able to invest $3,300 a month. Uh, that is what we typically do on a monthly basis unless something uh, odd. For instance, uh, oh, you know what? This is actually wrong because we put in an additional $800 uh, in our, our growth portfolio because some of the positions just had really been downturned or, or had really been, um, had really sold off. And so we actually for this month did 4100 I need to make that, that, that change there. But we invested $4,100 this month. Uh, the gain that we saw is 5300 bucks, up 5%. What I am really proud about is our dividends freaking 7x, 8x from where they were at this time last month, as well as we still have one particular ETF that's going to be paying out on the 30th of this month. And so that number is actually going to get even larger. But quarter one of 2021, we only got $10 in dividends. Right now we sit at $80. And like I said, we have one more ETF that's going to be paying us. IYC actually is going to be paying their dividend out on the 29th of the 30th. So I'm a couple days early on this video. But uh, neither here nor there. Uh, and what I like to always do is keep a running goal uh, as to where we are going. Uh, we hit $100,000 back in November, early of November. And as you can see here, we have basically been moving sideways slash down from November all the way up until now. There has been a lot of volatility in the market. However, it's been allowing us to lower our cost basis, put additional dollars in at lower rates. So I am, because we are such, or, or because we are at the beginning of our wealth building journey, I'm really appreciating and really trying to get in as much dollars as I possibly can at this lower cost basis in order to uh, see that upside in the future. And so, um, yeah, with that being said, $100,000 was uh, November 4th, and our next goal and what we are going after is $200,000. So I would like to thank you very much uh, for watching this video. If you found any of it valuable, please consider sharing it to, to others. And I look forward to seeing you at a future video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.